So, hello everyone, Nino Haxer here, bringing you guys a support Malzahar commentary. And I think this is the first Malzahar commentary I've done, because as you guys probably have guessed, he's easily one of the best supports right now, mostly because the AD carry meta has started to shift to more utility AD carry being played, such as Varus, Ash, Jin, with people with a lot of CC. So it benefits support who have tons of damage, like Malzahar, Zyra, and that's why we're kind of seeing them a lot more often. And so, in particular, I think Malzahar is really strong because you just summon Voidlings and they really can't do anything. People just have to run. And you'll see that... Um, I'll try to show you how I like to use Voidlings in lane, and especially coupled with Varus CC. Like, we can pretty much just one-shot anyone you want. And you'll see that a lot in this game. So I think overall in this lane matchup, uh, it's Varus, Malzahar versus Jin, Janna. And Janna's not the best counter to Malzahar, the only annoying part about her is that I can't really one-shot her because she runs really fast, so she can actually out, uh, outrun my Voidlings, and that makes the matchup a little annoying. But otherwise, I definitely have enough pressure in lane to zone them out. So if we actually rewind that and rewatch that, we just hit level 2. They're also level 2 as well. But I know that I'm much stronger than them, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and throw an E, summon double Voidling. You can see that the Jin pretty much just has to run right now, because the Voidlings are going to catch up and Philly hit him. Varus is throwing a poke at the Jin, and then because they're so zoned out and I have two Voidlings, they just have to keep running. Like, the Jin cannot stay in lane, and because of that, he's they're both going to miss experience just trying to kill my Voidlings off. And that's kind of how you want to harass people in lane. You kind of want to time your harass so that they're going to miss some CS if they choose to stay, and... Uh, if they stay and then I'm like taking the CS, they'll eat a bunch of Voidling damage, so... You can see how much control I have in this matchup if I play really aggressively. You should also note that as soon as you, I see Jin firing up, or the Varus firing up an arrow, I'm already starting to run up to try to zone them out more. And just kind of timing when you go in to be aggressive is also really important, not just because I'm re a really strong champion. So since my Voidlings, I don't have two charges yet, I'm usually just looking to throw an E on the Janna and then backing off. That way I can keep rocking my Spell Thief. Now, we are kind of pushed to their tower, but I think that's fine. I think in this matchup in general against Jin, you want to always be pushing up to their tower. Jin has a hard time last hitting under the turret, so you just want to keep pushing them in. It's not the best idea to throw Voidlings unless you're trying to zone them. It's also a really bad idea to try to stay under tower after you throw an E because I don't know if you caught that, but I pretty much took a tower shot for free for no reason. You can see how Jonna broke my shield there, went for an E to- I tried to summon double Voidling, but I ended up taking a Jin 4th auto and a tower shot, which is super bad. So that was just not a worth trade on my part. I did end up zoning the Jin Janna for a little bit, but I don't think it was worth taking half my health. Now you can also notice I'm playing really aggressively because I see the Lee Sin went mid and I think that um, it would probably be wise for me to ward it, the river but I don't see a, re a real need to ward it right now since we have we've always known where Lee Sin was he showed up top before he showed mid so I don't feel there's ever a need to ward if you know where the jungler is. You can usually give it maybe 20 seconds or so before you go for a river ward. Now you can see that we pushed up, so I'm going to go ahead and drop one of my trinket wards in the try, because now the Leeson could potentially go bot. Ferris even puts a ward in this bush just to be extra safe. You can see that I see there's a fight going mid, and I'm already running here, because we already shoved bot, so I know that the Varus isn't really in danger of dying, and since the wave reset and they're coming back, it's a Jinjana lane, they definitely cannot kill Varus if he's by himself, like I don't think the Jana can CC enough, so I think so this is a really good opportunity for me to roam. But turns out my mid laner and jungler were able to kill the Lee Sin, and so they killed him, so I just backed off, went back bot. You can also see how the blue team even uh, sent question mark pings, because they realized immediately that since I wasn't in lane, I'm not in this bush, I must have gone mid, so they already pinged the missing calls. And it's really good on their part to ping that I'm missing. It's good to have that kind of map awareness. You see, trying to do the zoning thing once again when the rain creeps are dying. Uh, take a little bit of too much damage. 
And it wasn't the best thing because uh, the wave was kind of pushed far up, so when the Voidlings go to their tower, uh, the Voidlings got one shot by the tower, so they kind of died too fast and then I lost all my pressure once the Voidlings died. But it wasn't the worst thing ever. It didn't took maybe half health. It was okay. You can see we're getting a lot of free damage on Jin. The Varus is always trying to poke the Jin whenever the Janna tries to use shield on herself. It's really good on the Varus's part. Now it's really unfortunate because our Trinket Ward's just expired, so now the Lee Sin's actually going to come in for a gank, which was pretty bad timing on our part. It was just very, very unlucky that our Trinket's just ran out. But you can see that as soon as the Lee Sin comes, now we kind of have to assess the situation, right? So. You see the Jin is kind of recalling and he's a little bit scared because he's low, right? And Lee Sin's pretty healthy. Varus is a little low on mana. He has mana for maybe one Q. I still have double Voidlings and Ignite and all my summoner spells. So let's slow this down really quickly. So you see the Janna Tornado is coming in. I'm already starting to retreat. I know that won't hit me, not even going to flash yet. And notice how I immediately start turning, uh, summoning my Voidlings and we're both going to turn on Lee Sin right now because if we start damaging the Lee Sin, uh, like if I die right here, like if Lee Sin just jumps me, then I know for 100% my bugs will do enough damage to the point where the Varus can clean up. So I'm just going to turn, throw all my spells I have on Lee Sin. And also notice how I'm going to start moving like slightly upward this way. And I'm also positioning myself so that the Voidlings are going to tank Lee Sin Q if he chooses to shoot it out. And that's actually what ends up happening. So we can't even get the Q on me. Then I'm going to go for the Ignite. I start running back a little bit. I saw that I got hit by the fourth shot by Varus. And I'm not even going to try to flash. There's no need. I see that they're retreating right now. Lee Sin actually ends up flashing to dodge at Varus Q. And I end up living without having to burn flash at all. So that was a, a pretty failed gank on their part. Which is really nice because we got a bunch of summoner spells. And you see now the Xerath is going to roam down. They don't see the Xerath, and so he's going to get a free stun, combo them, uh, ends up ulting for the Jin. So that was quite good for us. Didn't end up burning Flash. We super heavily chunked the, the Lee Sin, and uh, we ended up getting Xerath a kill. So that was good for him overall. And it was just really important there to not really panic at all, because now that I still have Flash, and I can play very, very aggressively since the Jin flashed in that after he died. So now I know that we're in a really good advantageous spot. So also notice how I didn't immediately go to the bot lane after I respawned because the Varus went back. I know the bot lane uh, just is also walking back to lane. So instead of heading bot immediately, I started taking Scuttle Crab. Because if you also notice by my items, I didn't choose to buy Scythe Stone. I ended up getting Frostfang Boots and Refillable. And I went this really greedy route because I feel it as Malzahar. Uh, boots is super important. You should almost always get boots because that way uh, you can run up to the AD carry or the support if they do not buy boots and you can out you can outspeed them, you can get an ult off because I know I'm going to be 6 very soon. And then because I bought boots I brought Foster Fang for more damage and a refillable because I think refillables are generally pretty good val is a pretty good value buy if you have the 150 gold because over the span of the game you can always keep using refillable potions. It's quite nice. You can also see that the wave is in a really good spot for us. Notice how the Varus isn't really pushing. He's kind of just letting the creeps come forward. And this is really nice because there's a lot more space for my Voidlings to chase down people now. Also notice how the Varus just turned 6. This is really important because they're not even 6 yet. And so we have a huge advantage since we have the CC from the Varus ult. I'm not even 6 yet, but it doesn't even matter. You can see that Varus gets a really nice ult. You can see immediately I'm going to start summon double Voidling into an E into a Silent. And now the Jin is screwed. He doesn't have any summoner spells. My Voidlings can definitely hunt him down. So that's kind of a unnecessary flash on the Varus. And now, after he's dead, we immediately turn on Janna. So I, the Janna makes a really big misplay here. So notice how when she's walking, my Voidlings are focusing whoever my E is on. My E happens to be on a creep right now since it bounced off the Jin after he died. And notice that when the Janna is walking here, she's walking pretty much right where the creep dies, and now she gets infected by the E. So now my Voidlings all turn to her now. Because of that, my Voidlings are chasing her, and I'm getting another kill. So I think that if the Janna, like, flashed this way, 
away from the creep wave, she wouldn't have taken my uh, me and aggro, and then she would have definitely lived. But because she didn't do that, she ended up dying and wasting Clash. Now Varus and I double kill their bot lane, we're going to do a huge amount of damage to her tower. We're going to try to hit the tower more, but it doesn't seem like we can really take it immediately. The problem is if we take it now, uh, we're not really sure where uh, if their bot lane is coming back right now, and we're both kind of chunked. So, we'd rather just play it safe. We'll just head back right now. No real rush to take the tower. Like, I think most of our other lanes are doing okay. Ajax is kind of losing in CS, but eh. There's no real rush to take the tower right now. It's fine. I'm just gonna go bot again. Soak up the experience since I saw them shoving the lane. And now I do have ult, which is really good for us. They also turn 6, but Mazahar ult is much, much scarier. Go ahead and put my pink ward there. Also get one ward there. And you can see that since Varus is shoving the lane, they have to retreat right now. Because I always have the option to flank them, like right now. So if they choose to stay under the tower, I can always just loop around. We kill the tower, and then we kill them both. So they know they have to know this. They have to retreat. Johnny even puts a ward here, which is very smart. And now I'm just kind of just zoning them out of the wave. So, I see a lot of people are going to head mid. This pink ward even catches the Jinjana running up. So I'm going to start running up also and match the rotation. So let's actually switch to our perspective. So you can see that Jana's kind of hovering in this area. And I actually really want to one-shot Jana. I know she walks down this path right here. And if she face checks, then I can just 100% kill her. So, I'm just kind of waiting for her to come. But now he's here walking all the way this way. You can see I'm already making my way towards here. Because if I were the Janna player, my instinct right now is that I kind of want to be protecting my Jin, who's most likely going back bot lane since Varus is shoving. So I'm going to try to meet the Janna right here. Because that's where I think she's going to go. So I put a ward first. Wait in the bush. I see her. She's coming. So as soon as she comes, I'm going to start casting my combo. Double Voidling into E. Into Ignite. Get the ult off. And now... I'm going to go for the silence. And the reason why you go for the silence af uh, bef after you ult instead of before is that your silence reapplies your E damage if you get it off during the E duration. So you can see that the uh, the E duration is still on her all this time and this allows the Voidling to keep hitting her. And now she dies just from one combo. This unfortunately kind of puts me in a bad spot because uh, Lux ends up finding me and then end up dying for that. So. I think that was a bit of a greedy play on my part overall. I think I tunneled a little too hard on the Janna once I saw her going this way. But I guess it was a good display just to show you how much damage you can do as a Malzahar. You can one-shot any support in the game, as long as you're not a tank. Anyways, now that we took the bot tower, it's time to rotate. I think it's really important that you do that as a bot lane. You should always, always, always rotate if you already took the bot tower. And our team was already doing quite well on their own. So now this is a really good time to accelerate our lead. Now, the ward I put here is going to be really useful because we can pretty much see the bot lane rotation up here if they ever do so. And you can see how I'm always pretty much accompanying this Vi because Vi and I together can once again one-shot people since she provides a lot of CC for me. I'm going to start hitting the tower whenever I can. I see Vi is trying to take red, so I'm going to try to rotate down to accompany her. She's a little bit of a bad spot, so... Summon some void links just for some vision in that bush. Don't take the red, unfortunately, but that's okay. And you can see this ward is just paying off so much. We see the rotation every single time, and that really allows us to prepare in advance. Now, I know it's because there's a pink here, I know Delisa doesn't know I'm here. So I'm kind of waiting and watching to see if he jumps on this Varus. And as soon as he does, I'm going to go try to suppress him. He kind of goes for a little bit of a fail kick because uh, the Earth got a really nice stun off. So I follow it up with a suppression. He ends up dying for free. You see, now that the Leeson is dead, we do have a lot of pressure mid. I'm going to try to just zone out the Lux as best as possible. And now I see that the General is going on the Varus. So now it's my duty to block the General. You can see I'm trying to do my best to zone out the Lux. And what's interesting is that both the Jin 4th Bullet and the Lux Q hit me at the same time, but my passive ends up blocking both spells, which is kind of weird. I know it's a little bit of a bug, but I think that's 
actually fine because I believe that's how Sivir Spellfield works as well. If two spells are at the same time, then uh, ends up blocking both. So I got kind of lucky there. Didn't have to take much damage. Yeah, that was a pretty value queue I got. Hit all three of them. Got a lot of uh, money. Now, I was going to rotate top just in case Elisa was going to help do the 2v2, but didn't end up happening. And now I see that the Lux is here. Ferris Boots had a really nice ult. Gets the Lux, and now it's just time for me to go in. Go for the uh, double Voidling into Flash E. Get a lot of damage on her, and end up killing her with a Q. I think the Flash was a little bit unnecessary. I just wanted to try to kill her before she can get off an ult, because I wasn't sure if Varus was going to get hit. If Varus got hit by ult, he was definitely dead. So... Maybe he, didn't, he, he wouldn't have healed in time, I'm not sure, but I guess it's better to be safe than sorry. Now, end up shoving the wave, and now I'm going to start rotating the top immediately. We can see that the Jax is kind of fighting Lee Sin, so we're going to start making our way up there with my entire team. And uh, Xerath missed that Q, which kind of sucks, because Lee Sin ends up uh, getting that kill. And now, uh, we end up getting the kill on Lee Sin for free, which is quite nice. So this is where things get a little sketchy. So this Swain is kind of just running at us, and I really want to fight this because you know I have old, I have everything. So I'm gonna ping on this Swain, throw everything I have on him, and we're just gonna try to blow him up right now. But the Jonah does a really nice ult to save him. <laughs> we just miss all our skill shots on him, which is super ridiculous. I end up dying to the Swain ult, and then we don't even end up killing the Swain. So. uh we end up burning summoners. That was just pretty bad execution on our part. I think there was... It was really bad that we all missed everything. Especially the uh, Xerath Vi. But that's okay. I think if we were all on the same page and turned him earlier, then that would have been a free kill. But that's okay. Now, went ahead and bought a Haunting Guys after I upgraded my Sightstone. I think you almost always should be getting Lucidity and Eye of the Watchers first because... It gives you 20% TDR, and Malzahar ult has a really, really long cooldown. It's over 2 minutes long. And with the TDR and everything, it's down to 96 seconds, which is pretty nice for me. Now, I was kind of heading bot just to get a ward over here. I just want to make sure that my Varus can farm safely without me. It's not really my goal to babysit the Varus anymore. It's better for me to just roam around the map and just pick off people on my own since I'm very strong. So just putting some a couple words for the Varus is good. And now Infernal Drake is spawning, so my goal right now is to just zone them. So you can see right now, I'm already making two Voidlings. Just gonna scare the Janna Jin. Not gonna commit my ult, because if I try to go for an all-in, I don't know where the rest of the team is. Like for example, Lux could be hiding over this wall, for example, and that would be really bad if I got caught. So I'm not gonna try to be too aggressive, just enough to scare them away. So you can see, we're already starting to make our way topside. Now, I want to try to provide vision for the jacks because by putting a ward right here, it allows us to see a lot of the rotations. Like, for example, if the Leeson's going to try to flank the jacks if he's hitting the tower here, this ward will catch it pretty early in advance. So, this putting one ward here is super important uh, if you're trying to make any plays in mid tier 2 or uh, top tier 2. Now, I don't know what the heck went on here, but uh, if I just went in, I don't know why he did that. You can see that I'm just going to try to accompany my Xerath to make sure he can get out. But now I see Swain, so I'm immediately just going to turn on Swain. Because if I stay and try to hit the lease in here, I think we're both going to end up dying because the Swain's going to collapse on us. So I just at least have to make sure that the Swain can't do too much. And you can see the Xerath already got kicked, so there was already no point in trying to save him. So by turning like this to the Swain, I, he at least couldn't get off, give, get off his ult that early, and with the Varus help, I was, we were able to burst him down pretty easily. Yeah, the Xerath is pretty much doomed. I think there's no way he could have saved him. The least stopping the Swain and getting a kill on him was quite nice. Now, get another Silence, which delays the Jin Summoners from coming up, so we almost get him, but that's okay. Now we're just going to keep pushing. Varus also gets a really nice snake. So you can see that... Three of them are dead, and two of them were super low. We know that they're super chunks, so we're just going to keep pushing. Like, I'm going to get one sneaky ward over here, just in case there might be some kind of flank later on. But yeah, Jax and Varys are going to start hitting the tower. We're just going to keep uh, pushing. Unfortunately, the Varys get sniped by Lux, but that's okay. 
I don't know why Delisin goes in here. I think you really underestimated Jackson and I's damage because I just end up throwing everything on Lee Sin. And uh, I realize now that I really want to get the inhib because there's a very strong chance that I might die. And if Jax doesn't finish off the inhib, I have to because getting a hib is super important. So we both end up turning, getting the last hit on the inhib, and now I'm just running. Not even going to try to save him. I'm just going to run for my life. Now, we're kind of going in different directions, but... I also kind of want to be far enough where um, I can silence people that are going to chase Jax, and if he really needs someone to jump to, he can jump to me. So I'm going to summon some Voidlings, try to throw off a silence just to delay them, and now we're just going to bolt. So it was good that we got the inhib. I made so much money that fight, I ended up just buying Leandry's Torrent just straight up. I think I had 350 gold exactly, so I ended up just buying a Dark Seal for fun. I don't think it's a good item, but uh, I didn't know what else to buy. <laughs> but now, assuming this Swain shows top, I'm already making my way up. You can see how the Xerath is kind of patiently waiting for someone to come by, since we have a ward right here. Now, unfortunately, the Jax dies, and we see the Jin is recalling, but you can see how as soon as we start running down, they all start backing up, so we know something is warded here, so we're all just- I'm just telling my team to back off, this is a little sketchy. But I was gonna take the blue and we're just gonna bolt. It's not worth trying to do that, you can see just by the movement of the Jin when he was recalling and leaving that we know something is warded here, so it's not worth trying to contest anything, and if you check the vision, this is warded. That's how you knew. Now, I'm gonna start making my way towards bot side, since there isn't really much to do right now, the Jax is dead, so we lost all our pressure top. And Zareth is up there, and I see the Varus is kind of pushing, so I'd rather just accompany him, make sure uh, no flanks could happen. I'm kind of just waiting on the side, outside of their range of vision. So now I see the general's coming, so I'm going to start leaving. I don't want them to know I'm here just yet, so I'm not going to try to block the bullets. I'm going to wait a little bit, and we saw that Swain is approaching. So Swain is going to go for a very aggressive flash. I think that's because he didn't see I was there because I was hiding the whole time. And now because he mispositioned, once again, go for the combo, double Voidling into an E, into an ult. First and I just completely burst him once again. That was a nice Lux ult to kill the Varus. Barely dodged out of the uh, Lee Q. If I got hit, I would have died. Now Vi just goes ham once again. Can't really save her, but that's okay. Did the best I could given the situation. I end up turning 2 for 2. I think that's fine given how they were all down there. Now, I'm going to work towards trying to get a Rylize next. I think you should always get Rylize after the injuries. Also got two control wards because we want to start trying to get Baron. I think it's really easy to get it given our team comp. Now, you see the Swain TP's coming. I'm going to try to help the Jax. I see the Swains here. I don't have ult yet, but I can at least try to silence, maybe make some Voidlings. Get off a really nice double silence on them. Jax is able to also get a stun. He's going to flash, jump away, and note how... As we're running, I place a ward in this bush, and I also start sweeping, because if they happen to have this area warded, I want to try to deny any kind of vision, so that way the Lux cannot ult them. You can see Jonna kind of has the same idea too. As soon as she sees us, puts down the ward, she's turning on her sweeper, so that way we get denied vision of them in here. That's really important to do that. Now I'm going to start using one of my pinks in here. I know this is worded. We get a nice pick on Lajana with the Vial. That's quite good. I'm just going to kill her off. And uh, yeah, the Vi just dies there. That's okay though. I'm going to try to flank them. This is a little risky because I don't quite have vision on their entire team just yet. I see the Jinny's here, but I didn't see the Lee Sin who's coming around. And at this point... I really am in a really bad spot, and I didn't. I think I saw the lease in until it was way too late. So I'm kind of going for this Wayne tunneling, and then I'm like, wait, this is really bad. Now, I'm going to try to run right now. It really sucks because my shield got popped, so what's really bad now is that I'm going to get rooted, and then now I die. I did have flash, but I chose not to use it. And the reason why is because I think my flash ult's a lot more valuable than me trying to survive as a support. I think it's almost always better to just try to die like if it's kind of late into the game like mid game it's almost always better to save your flash for a really good initiation instead of just trying to not die because i don't think me dying really matters if i get a really good kill on someone 
No, Varus is just trying to do some fancy feet. He dies. I guess I get a kill top. I don't know. At this point, we're just kind of not really closing out the game, which is really annoying because we're very far ahead. There's no reason for us to just kind of fool around. Like, those guys are just fighting up there. I'm going to try to help them. Now, I see the John is right here. Once again, get off the combo um, of E, double voidling. Now, I try to go for the flash Q. The uh, Jana ends up flashing my Q, and now I'm going to try to kill Lee Sin, but it's a little hard since I have everything on cooldown. Unfortunately, they have so many shields, they just get out. That was a bit unfortunate that I wasn't able to one-shot the Jana at that instance. It was because she uh, actually has MR now with Aegis. But that's okay. We end up trading flashes, it's fine. Now I'm just going to tell my team, guys, let's go Baron, let's go Baron. I pinged it a bunch of times. So we sweep the area, nothing's here. Go ahead and start making Voidlings. It's really important when you start Baron with Malzahar, you don't want to make your Voidlings first because they also get one-shot by Baron. So you want to make sure that your tank is actually get having the Baron aggro. So that way you can see my Voidlings are starting to multiply and now it's starting to deal a bunch of damage. Never ever make your Voidlings first. You can see that I, after I made my Voidlings, I wasn't even staying inside the pit. I was trying to make sure that I get some vision out here so you can see Lee Sin. Because suppression is one of the few things that stops you from using smite. And so if I see Lee Sin's trying to do some kind of crazy like war jump flash into the Baron pit to try to smite it, I can just suppress him for two seconds. He can't do anything. And then uh, we get the very secure Baron. So you always want to stay outside the pit as Malzahar and zo zone off your jungler. Now with Baron, we're just going to push mid again because we want to take this inhib since it respawned. I'm going to try to stay a little bit more up front because you should think of Malzahar as this really big zoning champion. Like, my ult's about 600 range. Basically, no enemy champion can really go within 600 range of me because I'm just going to ult them otherwise. So they kind of just have to back off. We can get the inhib for free. Now... I saw that the wave was really pushed far up, so I actually chose to go back first because I, run, I wanted to restock on wards uh, for this next uh, push on their inhib. So that's me sweep the jungle, and it was a pretty much a free recall since my team is now just starting to push. So it was good that I got a few extra wards in stock in case to clear some of mine during the siege. So once again, trying to be this very big zoning presence from our team. You can see the Lux can't really go up too far because if she does try to go up a little bit too far I'm just going to ult her and we're just going to kill her with all our poke first. So I'm just staying off onto the side making sure that Lee Sin can't get a flank off. They have to just confront us straightforwardly. Now Varus gets a nice ult off. Zoning them really hard. I see the swing is running up so I'm going to go ahead and now go for the suppression. We get a fair amount of damage off. That's okay. He's on yet. We got a Jono ult. It was no okay case rate of ult. This is a really nice Lux combo. But I don't think it matters too much. We do sell a Baron. They have to go recall right now. Jax was also pressuring top super hard. So we know that no one's here to defend the tower. End up killing the Jin with a nice Vi flash Q. And now we break open their base. After we kill this, I'm immediately making my way top. When I get the Baron on these minions. So the mid is pushing. And Jax almost has top, so might as well just take top tower. I go help the Jax. Gonna just kill off this Wayne. Pretty easy stuff. Go for a silence and lease in to make sure he can't do anything too fancy. Now we're just gonna get a lot of cleanup kills. I don't know what the Lee doing here, but I just ignited him and I end up getting the kill. Now that's pretty much the game. I think Zareth and I are just kind of chilling. I don't know what the Jin is doing, but he's really out of position. So, uh, you can see I'm just going to run up to him. Just pull off a combo. Yep. You can see you flash. E. W. Into an ult. Can't do anything about it. Ends up dying to an auto by me. And I was there just a little left to that. And that's game. So, this game was a little bit one-sided, but this was my only recent Malzahar game that wasn't just a soup. That wasn't just like super 
not helpful. I think this game really showcased how you should abuse Malzahar in lane. And yeah, he's just really powerful. You saw me just one-shotting people early on. Uh, really just making myself a huge zoning tool. And I think that's really... It's a very different kind of playstyle. Like, you should think of him kind of like as an Alistar even. Because you know how Al Alistar has this really nice zoning power where you can't get a range of his headbutt pulverize combo? Malzahar is kind of the same thing. Where you kind of want to just zone people out. You can see just that, like, especially when we were taking towers, like mid, for example. We were sieging down bot. Just me just running up to them, like... People just have to run, especially if you have the lead. Like, we had a lot of Infernal Drakes and we were lucky, and they had so many kills that I was actually doing a lot of damage, so... I don't know. I think Malzahar is a really good champion. It's pretty fun to play if you're tired of playing more traditional supports, but he is going to get nerfed pretty soon. I don't think the nerfs are going to affect him that much. It'll at least make him more balanced and more in line with the other support metas, because as of the moment, he's pretty broken, and that's why every team is playing him, so... Hope you found this helpful, and yeah, thanks for watching.